So these are going to be the best decks in the game so you can get to whatever rank you want to as fast as possible. So when the new expansion comes out, you can just experiment and do whatever you want. The first one is going to be Naga Priest, and I'm not a huge fan of this deck, but I cannot deny the fact that it is ridiculously strong. The idea behind the deck is pretty simple. You want to just play as many Nagas as you can while also weaving in Serpent Wigs and building up giant minions. You can also play cards like Pelagos, so that way every time you play the Serpent Wig, it becomes that much more powerful. And then you want to finish off your opponent by playing something like Boon of the Ascended and or Bless to get huge minions out there and close out the game. Next is just going to be a staple. It is Beast Hunter. It's a deck that is strong at basically every stage of the game. I mean, even if you look at the curve right here, you got a pretty decent early game curve with a lot of one, twos, and threes. And then you have an okay mid game, although you do fall off a little bit in that turn four or five, unless you draw really well. And then you spike back up turn seven and beyond, because look at all these late game options that can single handedly win you games into multiple different matchups. Next up is Imp Warlock, and I think this is the first time in a while I'm going to put Imp Warlock and Curse Imp Warlock on this list, and the reason is because Imp Warlock has now surpassed Curse Imp Warlock, which is extremely exciting because this deck is a, a little bit more straightforward, it's more aggro, you're not going to be killed over the top most of the time unless it's Sire Denathrius, but since it's just one card, there is a decent amount of counterplay, but the idea of this deck is pretty simple, you just want to flood the board with some Imps early, pump them up with Vile Library, pump up your Flustered Library, Librarian with a ton of imps, draw a ton of cards with impending catastrophe, and just keep applying pressure until your opponent just doesn't have the removal to deal with you anymore. The next on the list is an Rage Warrior, which has had an amazing story. This deck went from absolute dog water garbage to actually playable when the weapons expert was released in the mini set, because now you're able to draw your powerful weapon more consistently, which is awesome. You're able to snowball really well, but that wasn't quite enough. This deck really became top tier, a top five deck in the game when the animated Berserker was re-released for a month with the Knights of the Frozen Throne uh, event. So not only is this a 1 mana 1-3, one, which is a pretty good stat line, especially in a deck where you want to do damage to your own minions, but it also does a damage to all other minions that you play, so it enables a lot of combos. You're able to immediately activate this Frenzy, immediately get a Pump with Anima Extractor for every minion you play, immediately give the Craze Wretch Charge, all of your minions are damaged to imbued axe gets to go off and all of a sudden this deck was able to snowball a lot more consistently from turn one and it went from absolutely terrible to really good over the course of like a month. So as promised, next on the list is going to be Curse Imp Warlock, which is different enough from Imp Warlock to where I think I can also put it on this list. And honestly, the idea of the deck is pretty simple. You want to early flood the board with as many imps as you can. You want that early aggression force your opponent to constantly respond, which will then delay their game plan. And if you can do some damage in the meantime, fantastic. But since they're spending all these resources in order to try to deal with your minions, they open up their hand to be filled with curses. And the curses are actually the main win condition of this deck. I mean, obviously you can still win with a late gamer farm, a ton of 3-3 three, three imps, or a really good early game hand. But I'd say 8 out of 10 times, the curses are actually what's going to win you the game. And obviously you can have some bad hands, because since this deck has the curse package, the early game imp package will be a little bit less consistent. But still, overall, it is a very, very strong deck. I would highly recommend it to anybody who is especially like a beginner player, and somebody who likes having a kind of flexible game plan to play in two different styles. So this is going to be the best budget deck out there right now. So if you are saving up dust and gold in order to climb in the next expansion and get a ton of new cards, this is the perfect deck for you. This entire deck costs less than a single legendary. The entire deck is 1,540 dust and a legendary is 1,600. So the reason why this deck is so cheap, however, is because it does have a lot of weaknesses that sometimes legendaries can make up for. It does run out of steam pretty quickly and it doesn't really have a way of coming back. But if you can get the board to snowball, if you can get a couple minions on the board, then play Herald of Nature or Pride's Fury or even one big minion with the Mark of the Wild all of a sudden, your opponent can't really respond to the massive amount of pressure. So even though I just said the deck has its fair share of weaknesses, its snowball potential is so high that it still has a 54% win rate from Diamond through Legend, and it makes it one of the best decks in the game.
So the next deck on the list is going to be Fell Demon Hunter. And you can build this deck in two different ways, and it's slightly different. Basically, the only difference is you can put in top of the idol if you're going against a lot of aggro decks. I know, like I said, a lot of the best decks in the game are fairly aggressive, but if you're playing against slower decks or you just don't want to run top of the idol because there are a lot of cases where it's not great, uh, you could definitely run with this one. This would be my recommendation. And the idea of the deck is pretty simple. You just want to activate all of your relics as much as possible so they can snowball really quick. Quickly. And then you want to close out the game with Kurtris, Zylag, Artificer, or Jace. And if you can reduce the cost of Artificer, Jace, or Bran, you can double activate some of these extremely powerful battle cries, which can be enough to win games just like that. It's really awesome. Overall, the deck does have the weakness of losing to aggro, like I said, and you can put in top of the idol if you really feel like you need to. Next up is Control Paladin. This deck has a bunch of different builds. I have a couple of different videos on the different builds. This is just the more generic version. It's not really teched for anything in particular, but it's got a lot of removal. You got the Doomsday, you got a Quality City Tax, you've got Consecrate, you've got Carriel to heal you up with Rag and Reno. You've got Denathrius and Jailer uh, as your top end along with Theotar, so that way you can disrupt your opponent's combos. Honestly, this deck is just really, really strong. I mean, you also have the Battleground. Battle master to close out games quickly after you play the jailer this deck really only has one weakness and that's it's extremely telegraphed what you're trying to do if your opponent runs mutanus or theotar they can pretty easily shut down your denathrius and or jailer after you play your order in the court so i will admit there are some times when this deck can feel really bad but again with all of the aggro out there right now this deck has been absolutely killing it at least for me and if you want to play a control deck but you also like paladin this is a great deck for you so these last two decks are going to be kind of honorable mentions, dark horses, if you will, that are my own personal favorite. And the first one is going to be Secret Mage. I went 7-0 and with this deck not too long ago, which isn't a huge sample size, but it felt really, really good. Something about playing a ton of secrets and disrupting everything your opponent is trying to do is just pretty strong. I mean, one of the most annoying things about Thief Rogue is the fact that they can randomly generate a couple of mage secrets and play them throughout the game. But what if we just played a mage deck that ran all of these mage secrets and could sometimes reactivate them if you're able to get Orion on the board. You also have the ability to play some of these secrets for free with the Anonymous Informant which can snowball really hard. And then if that's not enough, you actually have solid late game with Magister, Reckless, and Mordrush, as well as the Wildfire package if the early game aggro and the early secrets aren't enough to win you the game, which they usually are. And the last deck on the list is going to be Phylactery Warlock. It's just, a, again, a personal favorite of mine. Something about being able to just play a ton of mines, give your death rattles to a ton of little small imps, and then killing them all off and doing 40, 80, 120 damage to your opponent. You can also play the version of this deck that is actually a mill version that runs the Selfish Shellfish. It has the potential to do more damage, so if you're playing against druids that gain a ton of armor, and you're playing against control warriors for whatever reason, this card can actually do a little bit better. But I think that 95 to 98% of the time, the mine version is just going to be better. So overall, these are the decks. I would highly recommend playing them to climb ranks quickly so you can just get to whatever rank your goal is before the new expansion comes out. I wish you guys luck on ladder. See you in the next one.